Welcome back to Mechanical Pros. Uh, we got Josh with us today. We're going to talk a little bit about R32. So, Josh, I keep hearing about R32. What what is R32? R32 is um, a new refrigerant that's out amongst others. Basically, the idea is, is we're we're phasing out of uh, 410A. Uh, due to high global warming potential. Refrigerants like R32 and R454B and so forth um, have a much lower uh, global warming potential. Okay, so I heard a couple acronyms there that uh, people may not be familiar with. A2L, mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about what an A2L is? So an A2L is just a classification for safety. Every refrigerant has one. We have A1, a2L, well, A2, A3, that's more or less just talking about uh, flammability potential. Okay. There's also Bs, there's B1, B2, B2L, B3, and so forth, and that's more toxicity. Okay. So primarily in our market in the you know commercial HVAC realm where we're just dealing with RTUs and stuff like that, we're going to be dealing with stuff like A2Ls and potentially A2s and A3s in the future. So when we start talking about flammability potential, um, you know, there's there's some rumors going around and things such as that. So does this does this refrigerant, this R32, does this have butane or propane or any of those things in it? No, there's uh, there's no butane or propane or any of that. R32 is one chemical, single component refrigerant. It's not a blend. R32 is actually in R410A. Oh wow! Uh, so we've okay. been around 32. Um, they just had to top it off with another. A chemical, I think it was 125 or 1234 YF, something of that nature, to kind of suppress that flammability. Okay. And that's what you got now with 410. Has this been around for a little while? Um, it's a little newer to the states, but it's definitely been around pre 2024. The appliance market, such as refrigerators and uh, window air conditioning, stuff like that, um, not just R32, but A2Ls in general, um, they've been around for years now in the US market. Um, in the air conditioning market, uh, they're huge in Europe. So R32 has been a thing in Europe for, I wanna say, a, close to the last decade. So it's a proven refrigerant. It's just gonna be something new for us here in the States. Okay, so if I'm understanding correctly, this has been used all around the world for a while and mm -hmm. it works and it works well. Mm -hmm. Any of the refrigerators that, hit, that we have here stateside right now, are they using R32? I wouldn't say so much R32, uh, mainly because a refrigerator, you think about it's a different application. Sure. You know, it's a lower temp, you've got a freezer and a refrigerator in your typical home refrigerator. So they're looking at something that's more like an A2 or an A3, mm -hmm. um, much higher flammability than this, actually. Okay. So actually butane, propane, yep. some of the natural, mm -hmm. natural refrigerants. Yeah. You also mentioned uh, 454B. What What's different about R32 and 454B? R32 is a single component refrigerant like we talked about before. It's just one chemical. R454B is actually a chemical blend made up of R32 and R1234YF. So with that, you're going to have temperature glide. With R32, you're not going to have temp glide at all. So what, what kind of considerations should we take notice of um, as technicians as we make this transition. I mean, you were around whenever uh, we transitioned from R22 to 410 mm -hmm. and all, of, all of the you know fine things that, that changed. So is this gonna be similar? Do we need special tools? Do we need, what do we need? What do we need to be aware of? A Couple things are gonna be different. We're gonna start seeing red labels on the tanks. Uh, we're also gonna start seeing uh, flammability symbols on the tanks as well. Just to put it out there that, hey, you know, even though this is got a low potential of flammability, it's still possible. There are different tools and adapters and such. The tanks here have left-handed threads, just like your acetylene torches. Interesting. Um, so what I have here, I have a couple things uh, from Yellow Jacket. I have a, a left-handed thread to male, just quarter inch uh, thread, normal thread to go to your regular hose. Okay. Um, so what this will do is it'll just I don't look, I just tried to put it on the other way. That's how I used to. <laughs> Old right? habits that yeah. Hard. yeah. So basically, you're going to put it on there, left-handed thread, just like your acetylene torch, and then you can take your other end of your hose and just basically thread it on as you always did. They also offer a whole hose like this. One side, um, you're still going to have your ball valve, like on all your most of your yellow jacket hoses nowadays. But you're going to have your left-handed thread 
adapter that will go onto the tank. Okay. And then you can simply hook this side up to your regular manifold gauge set. Okay, okay, very cool, very cool. So the tanks have a left-handed thread. It, do we expect to see left-handed threads on the equipment or are they still gonna be right-hand thread? They're still gonna be right-hand thread. Okay. Um, from what I've gathered, we've seen them already um, in the market with Daikin. Um, you're gonna see a lot of the Cormax fittings now. Okay. And that's primarily for one, the factory uses those. Um, it has a better flow to charge the unit more efficiently and faster. Sure. Um, and for us in the field, we can use it like that or even for vacuum purposes as well without pulling the cores. Okay. All right, so we talked about the left-hand thread on the R32 cylinder. Is mm -hmm. there anything else that's special about this tank versus, say, a 410A tank? Uh, yeah, there's one other thing, so I'll flip this tank around here. So as you see here, this is what we would think would be, you know, the little uh, punch tube or, or relief valve. So it's a little different because it's not just something that you puncture or it's going to puncture and all the refrigerant's going to come out of the tank. Uh, this is an actual operable thermal relief valve. So basically what happens when this is sitting inside of a warehouse or your van or something of that nature, it gets hot in, in the summertime in the back of those vans. Um, you know, what happens to gas when we sit it in a, in a hot environment, um, basically we just take our temperature and pressure, they correlate, one goes up, the other one follows, sure, right? Sure. So basically like any other encapsulated cylinder, this is gonna have a, a relief valve on it. So what that's gonna do is once that pressure gets so high, it's gonna start burping off here. And once that pressure lowers, it's gonna seal itself back off. So basically what the EPA recommends is to sit this in a cylinder, either in the upright position or in your uh, cylinder holder in your van with the, the thermal relief valve in the upright position. So then all that can leak out of there is actually just vapor. You mentioned that this, uh, this refrigerant is slightly flammable. As HVAC technicians, we do a lot of, a lot of hot work, right? Mm -hmm. So we're, we're brazing on copper line sets um, and things of that nature. So what, what should we be aware of if we are uh, making a repair on one of these systems? So if we're making a repair on the systems, it's gonna be best practices that we've been pushing for years. Basically what you're supposed to do is if the, the obviously if the system has refrigerant currently in it, we wanna re recover that refrigerant, put it into a recovery jug of some sort. If it's A2L, it's probably gonna have a red line on it with a gray tank just to say, hey, this is an A2L refrigerant. This has a potential flammable gas inside of it. Next, what you're gonna do is you're gonna perform a nitrogen sweep with the system. So what that's gonna involve is we're gonna hook up our nitrogen tank with one hose to either, probably most likely the liquid line is how I would do it, and either pull the core on the suction line or you know depress it in some way and just basically purge the system of any possible trapped uh, oils or gas. And then we can go through and do our piping repair, or braze repair. Uh, let's say that we're making a repair on a packaged system that has R32 in it. We're going to first recover the refrigerant, uh, then we're gonna do a nitrogen sweep, mm -hmm. and then anytime we're brazing on that system, we're gonna be purging with nitrogen. Correct. Right, which is, you know, purging with nitrogen while we braze, we should have been doing that all along, mm -hmm. right? In addition to that, what kind of oils uh, do we expect to see with R32? Is there gonna be a change in, in the oil type that, that's in that compressor? Nope, same as what we've been using for the last decade or better. Um, just same POE oil, okay. same as 410A, um, which is different, you know, compared to when we went from 22 to 410, we were on mineral oil and then we sure. made the switch to POE. So a lot of the things are going to stay the same, right? Yeah. So it, there's uh, just, just being educated about it gives a little bit more confidence. Mm -hmm. um, so naturally, you know, we recommend anybody that, you know, if you're going to be working with R32, um, it's probably best practice to get certified, but it doesn't have to be scary, right? right. Uh, it's we... scary because it's new. Yeah, that's absolutely. You know, anything in human nature, something new, we kind of get scared. That's our first reaction. It's just a matter of getting getting the training, getting your hands on it, and, and just doing it. Um, so with, with recovering the refrigerant, since this is a, a slightly flammable refrigerant, do we need a special recovery machine, or, or what does that look like? So we don't necessarily need a special recovery machine. We all here at MRG, we use the Appian G5 Twin. Um, which there is a bulletin out that says it is A2L compatible. With that being said, uh, there might be maybe a switch change out or something of that nature. Okay. Um, but you're seeing a lot of, I mean, you've been seeing it for years. If you go to the local supply house or even MRG parts, um, you'll see stuff that's gonna say 
A2L compatible. Sure. It's going to have a big label on there. Um, that's just because our tool manufacturers need to meet that requirement. Um, sure. What you what you are seeing is is a lot of uh, you know vacuum pumps and stuff like that that are switching over to inverter style like a soft start. Okay. And that's primarily just so it's not an on off contactor style that has the potential to make a spark. Okay, so anything to avoid an arc is kind of mm -hmm. what they're what they're trying to push. Okay. Yeah. Um, best practice will be to just make sure that your that your equipment that you currently have is A2L compatible mm -hmm. because you might be surprised it it might already be. Mm -hmm. And then obviously um, I don't think that this means that everybody needs to um, rush out and buy all new all new gear, but as no. you replace your gear, probably just, you know, that'll be another checkbox to look at. Make sure that the equipment that you are buying is A2L compatible as you as you move forward because the a2ls is kind of the the direction the industry is going with this r32 um, being mildly flammable um, are the equipment manufacturers being required to add any type of additional safety on these systems or, or what should we expect to see there we should expect to see uh, some sort of mitigation system ashray is implementing a standard uh, where anything that has a charge weight greater than 3.91 pounds of refrigerant so basically four pounds that it requires some sort of mitigation system. So that can require be anything from a you know a package unit on your house to a 110 ton package unit on a roof. All right, Josh. Well, thanks for your time today. Um, it's very informative. Um, I learned a few things, and hopefully uh, everybody watching learned some stuff too. All right. Well, thanks for watching Mechanical Pros, and we will see you on the next one.